We all know concrete is the standard for building houses, right? But what if I told you you could build a house using plastic bottles? And here's the surprising part. It's not just eco-friendly, but strong enough to withstand earthquakes and even prevent collapses. In this next segment, we'll meet Adeleke Adedoi, an environmental sustainability advocate and the founder of Green Growth Africa. He's on a mission to bring innovative solutions to tackle Africa's developmental challenges. Now, Green Initiative is all about oh, environment, environment. But like I say, uh, for us at Being Good Africa, uh, Africa still needs to develop social and economically. So we cannot just focus on environment, environment. I keep telling people, uh, if you go to the president of Nigeria today and say, oh, please put some maybe one billion dollars on the environmental issue, the guy will most likely send you back because he has unemployment to solve, health issues to solve education issues to solve. So if you go purely green, it's not speaking to the African development priorities. So what we do is to fuse together, develop solutions, environment solutions that also add social and economic value. That's what we call green growth, basically. And we've done that in about, actually in two, two, two African countries. Uh, we have mentoring for research program where we find new courses, new disciplines coming up like climate science, climate engineering, green finance, a lot of that. Where do you find that in Nigeria? You know, our universities are not developing curriculum in tandem with the problem of the 21st century, for which we want to raise the 21st century workforce. So, <clears throat> because of this gap, and Africa is suffering a lot because of this environmental issue. So we're suffering on one hand, we lack capacity on the other hand. So we are now bridging the gap by looking for students who are doing research in African universities on any field, health, medicine, whatever you, uh, that they, they have environment integrated into it and it becomes a green group research, whatever you're doing. And then we look for mentors, people, some of them in the World Bank, Harvard University, Oxford and Lice, to now support them remotely with their supervisors. So we form a research report. And we've supported about 178 students in 55 uh, universities across 27 African countries. So what we did or say, how can we construct a building that's very, very low carbon footprint? You don't know when you buy cement how much carbon footprint you are contributing. I mean, cement is the most carbon intensive component of the construction industry and it accounts for about 8% of global carbon emissions globally. So, where do we see how we can work in a way that do a building where we reduce the volume of cement that is used and then we went for plastic? And not just reducing cement on one hand. They're also taking up a lot of plastic from uh, the environment, which often ends in the sea and then have a lot of ecological problems. So we started and then they're trying to collect bottles. We gathered about 100,000 bottles and then we did our technical selection. And uh, at the end of the day, we used 27,333 plastic bottles to construct sort of a five bedroom apartment with a lot of conveniences as well and um, that became our building and uh, we realized that it's not just that we are helping the environment we also build something stronger than the concrete building uh, by science i mean by science which is done research done in india in america confirms that buildings made with plastic bottles are stronger often times three they are bulletproof i mean stronger than concrete ones and then they are bulletproof they are fireproof and they are earthquake proof Ideally, what you spend constructing a plastic building is supposed to be 50% of what you should spend constructing a civil, I mean, the normal block building. But that is a system where, you know, when you want to buy a block, you just go to, but I'm not you there, but I'll save you there, and then they bring block, and then you are fine, right? So for us, to so get, we, I said we gathered about 100,000 bottles. So we have to go buy the plus because you can't, we can't gather that ourselves, but, you know. And then we try to go and buy from places where they use them, where they dump them as refuse. We don't mind buying. Apart from the cost of procurement of those bottles, to carry 
to, 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 to convey 1,000 bottles from somewhere in Ventura in Ibadan, which is not so far, to where we are putting them, not so far, we spent 8,000 naira. So that put us at 8 naira to transfer each bottle. So please multiply that by 100,000. So cost of transport alone will be 800,000 naira. So we now calculate if we buy the plastic bottles in Lagos, where we have bulk, we can buy almost everything at once, and we use truck to pick them, we we'll spend less than half of that. So we, did a, we, we stopped picking bottles here and there in the bottom, we went to come and buy, and I think we spent less than 300,000 naira for transport, and we had all our bottles. Now, what is the issue there? If I'm doing block stuff, I won't pay all that. Why? So the issue is about the value chain of plastic collection. Oh, plastic, in the world, the world produces about 150 million metric tons of plastic waste, and only Nigeria contributes to about 4 million of that. They are scattered all over. That can build cities. But where are they? Scattered there, scattered there. So because the, the, there is no value chain, the value chain is weak, not that there's no value chain. Value chain of collection is very weak. It may also spend more. Also, in the whole of this country, I doubt it, there are 20 people who can serve as masons to construct a building. We found some in the north. And to bring them, we had no competitive advantage. I paid them what I cannot pay a professor, most likely. You know, yeah. They were, it was really very expensive. Before, I mean, they were good, but they are businessmen. You understand, even though they may not be educated as much, but they, they know that they are few. So there was no negotiating power. So for them to move, we had to pay a special transport fee beyond normal transport. We had to rent accommodation for them. We had to get things set for them and things like that. But whereas if you are building with normal building, you call one, uh, my, my uncle there, one brother there, the players are already here. So the issue that makes, what makes plastic more expensive at the moment to build is the value chain. The building became the method to re because the knowledge we're gaining, the lessons we're learning from that construction uh, were, for me, bigger than even the value of the building to me. So the building became a method and then these lessons we're learning, um, which is now informing our next phase of action, uh, became the product for us. So, and then we also decided to power it fully by solar energy, powered by 8.8 .8 kilowatt of solar system. I mean, that can take care of almost uh, close to a community.